Hello everyone, it's another video of TypeScript fundamental series and today we're gonna be talking about null and undefined types and we will see how control flow analysis can help us to write a better code. In TypeScript 2.0, two distinct types of null and undefined were introduced. Previously, both null and undefined were always subtypes of another type it was possible to assign them to every type, which means that it was not possible to catch errors related to misuse of them. With TypeScript 2.0, we get a way to change this behavior using another option of TypeScript compiler. But before doing that, let's see how TypeScript behaves without strict null checking using the default behavior. To do this, let's go to our good old Rainbow application. As usually, you can get the source code of today's lesson at olegconic slash rainbow. And the stuff that we will be talking about today will be under branch null and undefined check. So just check out this branch in case you want to see the end result of today's lesson. We are back in app.ts file of our project and Let's see on the example of document get element by ID what kind of problems non strict null checking may introduce in our application. If you hover over app component variable right here, you will see that inferred type of this variable is HTML element. It is, of course, expected since document get element by ID is expected to give us a reference of HTML element if it exists in our DOM. When I was saying at the beginning that null and undefined can be assigned to any variable, it meant this. Even though type inference of app component variable is HTML element, TypeScript compiler is not complaining here because we assigned null. Of course, it does not make any practical sense to do it here. But just to prove the fact that by default, TypeScript treats null and undefined as subtype of any type. So let's go back to more practical case. We all understand the fact that there is no guarantee that document.getElementById will return us an element. Let's say if ID that we are looking for does not exist in our document, it will surely cause us some problems. So we'll run our TypeScript compiler in watch mode so let's go into web browser and see what happens to our application. If we refresh the page, we will get error right here saying that type error happened and null is not an object. Of course, at this point of application, app component variable is actually not HTML element, but it is null. And issue like this would cause a problem during the runtime of our application. TypeScript's new feature is here to help us avoid such runtime errors. Let's see how strict null checks can improve the quality of our code. We'll go into tsconfig file and we will add another option here called strict null checks. We will set it to true. So this option gives us both strict null and strict undefined checking. In order to put it into effect, you might need to relaunch your text editor. So we are back, and if we go back to app.ts file, we will notice that we have this underline under app component reference, and it's telling us that object is possibly null. Right now we see combination of control flow analysis with strict null checking. And what a wonderful feature this is, because we can catch this error before runtime, during authoring of our code. So what control flow analysis is doing? It's going through our statements, through our assignments, if else statements, switch cases, and analyzes what can go wrong. So in order to fix this problem, all we have to do is to put this if statement to protect the possibility of app component value to be falsy. So we'll wrap this assignment into if statement and now this warning has disappeared. Let's put the reference of element ID back 
and check if our application is working fine. Yes, it is good. Even if we change it back to the wrong value, we will not see the error message because this statement is never executed. And again, if we hover over app component variable, we will see that now it has union type of HTML element or null. The interesting thing is that if we go further and we pass if statement, now inside of this if statement, app component has type of HTML element only. This is the case where control flow analysis is helping us. Just like null, undefined also became a distinct type. But at the same time, it is separate from null, so we cannot use null and undefined interchangeably. Let's illustrate this by creating this dummy variable a, and we will assign the value of undefined. It will have inferred type of undefined signed. Now if we try to reassign this value to null, it will give us an error saying that null is not assignable to type undefined. To see the practical utilization of strict undefined checking, let's play a little bit with function parameters. Let's clean this and we will make our interval int variable here as an optional parameter. In order to do that, we're gonna have to add the question mark right before semicolon. But first, let's double check what type it has assigned right now. So we see it is a number, it's exactly what we wanted, but if we make it optional parameter, now we will see that the type annotation turned to number or undefined, which is union type. In our case, it is working well since set interval function can work without this value at all. So when we hover over, we will see that the interval of timeout is optional parameter. While we're here, we also can see another prevention of error. Let's say if we are using the default parameter of our function, which is ES2015 feature of 1500 here. It will again tell us that parameter cannot have question mark and initializer at the same time. Because right now, in this case, it will never be undefined. And in this case, this question mark does not make any sense. So even though strict null checks is not a default option of TypeScript compiler, I would definitely recommend to have this option set to true if you start a new project. Let's go back and see what we have learned in today's lesson. We found out that null and undefined became a distinct types in TypeScript 2.0 and how we can enable strict checking for those two types. We have seen how control flow analysis can help us prevent runtime errors in our application. Please subscribe to continue learning more about TypeScript, which will bring your JavaScript development to the next level.